Hello and welcome back to Burford Road. Uh, this is the first video, there's been a staggering 56 views, which tells me there's an insatiable appetite for more videos. So let's roll on with part two. So, since the first video, I've done absolutely nothing on this board. Yeah, that's right, nothing. Uh, it's just sat in the garage whilst we're doing other things, including dry lining the garage, getting it ready for an actual model room. Um, but I have been out and about to the shows and I've picked up a few bits to start work on this project. So whilst I've been neglecting this board, I have been doing a bit of modelling. I purchased these MIG weathering paints and thought I'd uh, test them out on a couple of wagons. And this is the results. And they're not all the MIG paints. I have used some life colour as well to mix them together, but I have used the MIG for the rust effect, which I think has come out extremely well. I'm very pleased. And if I can remember how I did these wagons, I'll try and do a how-to video in the future. So now I have some extra bits for this board. It's time to start making a signal box, building some buffer stops, and weathering the rails. So this is the kit as provided in all its glory. You have the option of a left-hand or a right-hand uh, entrance build. Instruction supplied. Beautifully detailed. And this kit was about eight pounds. Which I think is fantastic value for money. So let's get on and build it. So the kit first recommends laminating these window parts before getting on with the main. So while the glue is drying on these parts, so now time to put the wall together. Uh, each wall has a small tab at the top with a label for the number to follow the instructions. And these will need cutting off uh, before gluing the wall together. I've also inserted the small windows into uh, the wall here. <laughs> next stage to add is the floor. Uh, I need to cut the uh, supports out, which will go in the corners here, and then the floor on top. Uh, but I've also bought this interior kit to go within the signal box. So whilst I can add the supports and make sure they're in the right position, before I go any further, I'm going to build the interior kit, and I'm going to paint the various parts. signal box interior kit it comes with several parts uh, we've got the uh, block uh, instrument shelf it's got a track diagram and then the shelf for the various parts you've got the uh, levers and the lever frame itself extension pieces there's a clock for the wall uh, an armchair cold storage box writing desk stove and stove pipe excuse my fingers and then we've got the block instruments and the block bells. So let's begin by building this shelf with the block bell and block instrument. Now as it's the end of the line, I'm only going to need one block bell and one block instrument. So 
So that's the block bell shelf complete. Uh, next to do will be the lever frame. So to give you an idea of how I'm going to signal the layout, I'll put these rather crude Hornby signals on the layout and that will hopefully explain the colours of the lever frame. So for trains coming into the terminus, we've got the distance signal, which will then come to the home signal. Uh, we'll have a shunt signal, which will take us into the loop. Technically, those two need to be the other way around, but uh, as I say, these are the crude Hornby signals. I won't be using these. Um, then in the loop itself, I have a shunt signal either side of this set of points, another shunt signal here, a further shunt signal, which would go down the other end of the loop, with a starter signal to go back towards the main line, and then the terminus station will also have a starter signal. Uh, the line will be token worked for the single line between the branch terminus and the main line. The set of points between the Preservation Society's engine shed and the branch line will be worked on a ground frame. So I have painted the frame. And as you can see, there is one yellow lever for the distance signal. And we have red levers for the various home signals and starter signals and the shunt signals. The blue lever is for the facing point lock, which would be on this set of points here because it's a passenger line. We have the black lever that will control these two points on the same lever. And on the very end, we've got a brown, which is the release for the ground frame, which would allow Preservation sign you need to take their logo out onto the branch line. So since painting the lever frame, I've painted the rest of the box and completed the build. Uh, when he last saw it, it was the four walls and I just slotted the floor in. So now I've put the interior in. The roof's remaining loose for the moment whilst I intend to uh, add a signal and add a light to the inside. As you can see, it's come out quite nicely. Although I'm a little annoyed with the lever frame because I've realised that I've left the uh, red handle sticking out with the blue and black. So the red should be in the frame for the interlocking. But there we go. I also need another black handle really because there should be two sets of points. One down the other end. Uh, but as you can see there's the block instruments and the track diagram. The track diagram itself had to be shortened down for its original size because otherwise it would have just stuck into the roof. Uh, but yeah, that's the interior of the box. Uh, now the kit didn't come with uh, anything for glazing, so I've used some uh, clear acetate, and then on the bottom windows, I've used glue and glaze. As you can see, there are several jars of paint around the box, and this is every colour I have used to paint this signal box, which uh, is a fair few. So I've got the standards here, the uh, grey primer, white, black. Uh, I've got life colour, wood colours. These various paints we use for the uh, interior of the box. So we've got the uh, red, blue and yellow for the... Uh, lever handles, there's a brass sort of colour 171 and then an olive green I use for the chair. And uh, these colours of the exterior of the box. Uh, I use these two for the roof and then all these are for the walls. So the instructions that came in the kit suggested using rail matches uh, light brick and dark brick for the wall colours. However, I thought they were too dark and they didn't match uh, the proper colour of the uh, Great Western Brickwork when you look at various photos. Uh, in particular, I studied uh, Colthrop Level Crossing, uh, knowing that that is one of the last surviving signal boxes on the uh, Great Western route. Uh, I thought it would be a good example to use for mine as a basis of colour. So I took uh, Humbrol Gloss 18, uh, I mixed that about four parts of the uh, number 18 with one part Humbrol's number 62, which is the uh, leather. And I mixed the colour together. 
and that gave me a very nice base coat for the brickwork. Um, if you look at the studies of the photos, you can see that the bricks are various shades where they've uh, darkened in the kiln when they were baked. Um, so to achieve this, they're again, again, it mixed up the Gloss 18 with the uh, Humble 62 and then it used various additions such as the Rail Match Dark Brick, Rail Match Light Brick and I also used a bit of Humble number 10 for the darker brick even using a little bit of Mat 33 with the uh, orange and that's why you've got the various brick colours I just picked out individually it took a while but I think it's come out really well um, so that was just the main brick uh, the instructions that came with the kit also just suggested using uh, Humbrol number 32 for the engineering brick which um, I agree is a perfect match it looks just right uh, so yeah all the uh, around the frames, the size of the box and the base, all picked out in Humbrol uh, number 32, four courses along the bottom, felt was sufficient enough. And that's come out really well. Uh, the walls then obviously I had to put a mortar wash on them. Uh, and I would recommend doing what the kit suggests, uh, which is to spray your painted walls with uh, a varnish before trying to put the uh, more wash on them because otherwise you're just going to pick up the old colour and it's going to break off. And I did try doing that and it wasn't working. So yeah, I put a coat of varnish on there, sprayed it on and then diluted with um, acrylic thinners, I used the uh, live colour cold wood light shade. Just soaked the wall in the thinners, added a dab of the paint and then wiped off with tissue and cotton buds. The exterior would work, such as the window frames, the boarding, doors, etc. I just used the three colours, uh, Humble 34 white, 71, which I think is light oak, and 10, which is this brown. And just used that to pick up the colouring. The roof, which I was particularly pleased with, is just two colours. And that is from the Life Colour Stone series. And I used uh, a bottom coat of green stone and while that paint was still wet, then just got a flat brush and just streaked the blue stone just to give this weathered effect around the roof. And the other part of the roof I've done is the chimney here. So this isn't the original of the kit. This was the uh, stove pipe chimney that came with the interior kit. So I've cut it off there, and I've just cut it into its various parts, rather than using the brick-built chimney that came with the kit. And then finally, we go back to the interior of the box. Uh, the other thing that I painted, obviously, was the floor. And again, that is using Life Colors uh, wood shades. And these are the various ones here, using the warm wood base color, and then shades one, two, and the dark wood. And. Uh, so basically you just got to use them whilst they're wet so put the base on and then just dip your brush in the various shades one two and the dark wood and just streak across and they tend not to blend and then they give this nice streaked appearance of uh, a nice used wooden floor so there we are yeah that's another building for uh, Burford Road um, still needs a few little details I'm gonna add some guttering to this I think uh, a uh, name plate for the location and as I said, I'm going to add a light in it and a signal in, in the interior. But yeah, I'll move on to the uh, painting the rails and adding the buffer stop next. But uh, as for now, thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon. Goodbye.